Sarah Jacobson, Marketing Art Flea. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to do keyword research th using three different tools at three different eh, ish pricing levels. So I started with Google Search Console. This is free and it's, um, it's not as good as it was. You used to be able to, so Google has messed me up with my obsessively tracking my keywords. They used to give you the keywords and the pages that were associated with it. And then they had a way that you could get your queries by each page. And now they've limited that even a little bit more. But if you come into your overview and you go into performance, you can find your, you know, what, what the group, what the keyword is um, and how many impressions you've gotten. But you're not going to get that um, really good overall report anymore that says that this is the average position you're in um, this is you know keywords like all these keywords are related to this page and I know for a fact that all those keywords are not related to the same page um, but you can take and do the pages and then go through them and try to figure out if you know which pages are hooked to which keywords and that's the thing about Google they used to give us that data and let us know which pages were hooked to which keywords but they don't anymore so that's kind of a little bit of a bummer so the next tool I want to show you is keyword hero and this is the first one I got that really kind of put the keywords back into my Google Analytics and I really like using this I tend to check this in the morning um, sometimes and or I'll check for like today and I'll show you today real quick when I um, when we do that but I kind of love this because I'm used to using Google Analytics so um, here I'll move me over here I'm kind of just in the way today sorry about that so if I were to say today right and say apply I can get my top keywords for today so Etsy shipping's doing good um, my average position is number four, so I really need to know that. So um, I'm really concerned with position number maybe four, but five through 20, because I want to see if I can get myself raised up on those keywords. So um, we can also click in here and see what keyword, uh, what position I'm at. Okay, that this isn't as good. We have another report I'm going to show you in a second that'll help us match those keywords to that. But the reason I like this report so much is as you go through okay so here let's let's do this this is fun so if we do december 8th 2018 which is a month ago so we have shipping right shipping is our top keyword and we go to a month ago christmas quotes right and Etsy Disney and Etsy shipping is number three now that was for the whole day so whatever but Christmas quotes is a thing I have noted that down obviously for each year I have a bunch of Christmas things business Christmas quotes um, and all that and so the nice part about it is Christmas business quotes Christmas marketing campaign ideas right so that's excellent. So what I've done is I've noted a lot of those keywords down. You could do this forever. I could go back and see what was happening on July 18th for last year because I've had the service for a while. It's just like every um, Google report. It starts when you put the view in. But so age demographics was my highest then. And then Etsy shipping. Now this doesn't move around a lot. It's not a... Um, when Christmas jumped up, that was a really big deal. I don't have a lot of keywords like at the top that really move around. Now, what I do like to see is on this average position. Um, so on this average position, I'm, I'm zero. Let's go till we get to, we want to get to like five or six. Because I have a lot of number one keywords. Yay, me. Um... Let's see, so if we go, let's go to 111, does that help us? Yep. 
let's get a 500. Okay, now we're at number 10. Number 10 is something that I really want to know about, right? Like if I'm number 10, it means a lot of times I'm dropping down to the next page on Google search. My search volume won't be super high at number 10, but I can figure out disc profile population st statistics absolutely goes to my disc personality pro profile page. Disney trademark infringement goes to my Disney um, Etsy copyright page, right? So you can do that. But they also have this report that's amazing. And you'll see a lot of not provided, but what you want to look at is that you have age group names. So they had the, they have the number of it. They don't have provided about 2,000 out of 6,000 on the report. This is just, you know, a week. But so age group names, and then they hook it to the page, right? And the average position. So this is my absolute favorite report because I can see all that. And then, of course, I can filter it. So if I was going to say real estate, right, I'm going to be able to see all the real estate keywords that I'm ranking for. I can do that by the landing page and know which landing pages are doing best. I can do it by the number of sessions. So this is just my worst time of year too, please don't judge. Um, okay, so number of sessions. Real estate video ideas, are you kidding me? I don't really, like, I have a real estate video ideas, but I haven't done anything to make that a, like I haven't internally linked it with another real estate video post. I haven't done anything like that. So when you see this view, you can really start to see, oh my goodness, these are some things that you could get, and it doesn't really tell you here how many, um, how many searches this gets a month, but you can easily use keywords everywhere. That's the plugin I use, and so that, that search gets 90 a month. So that's another thing you can think about. Is it important enough, uh, is it a strong enough keyword that you want to take some time? For me, I could totally put another um, a couple of internal links from other pages that are related. That would totally be worth my time and try to bump that up a little bit because it seems like a post that's already driving to me. Okay, last but not least is SERPstat, which is my absolute favorite. Um, it has everything all in one place, which is what I need because I have issues. Um, so first off the keywords, it's going to tell you what position you're in. So these are all my one position keywords. The nice thing about it is it tracks and it shows you, are you moving up or down? So like I moved up 30 points selling shirts on Etsy to position one. Holy shnikes, that seems really good. Now it is only a volume of 70, which I don't love, but okay, I can live with that. And then the nice thing about it is, remember where we had to kind of go gather things around from different places. It's not a, I mean, you know, depending on how involved you are in search, for me, it really makes a big deal. Um, but they also show you the number of competing results. So there's 27 million competing results, and I'm number one. That makes me really super happy. And then the five hacks for selling, and it'll tell you exactly which page you're on. But what I love the most, so... Yes, it's good. I already have these keywords. I can figure crap out about it, but what it'll do is it'll tell you other keywords that you rank for and the volume on Etsy or the volume on Google. Sorry, I was talking about Etsy. Um, the other keywords that you could start to try to rank for and what I use that for is I absolutely go through and I will do a section of top selling shirts on Etsy because I can get that data from a different website called Craft Count. So then all of a sudden I have that keyword in my blog post and I can start ranking for that and it's already an associated keyword in Google. So let's do something that's that these are my these are my ones that go with my customer demographics. 
Um, so like age group names, different different names for different age groups. We don't want dance. Girl Scout age group names. That's super easy. I could do that. Um, and what will happen is as you go through this, you'll be able to go, okay, do I want to make this another subject or a, a heading in my post with some information and try to rank for that keyword for this post? Or should I make supporting content off to the side? So say I was going to do, let me do one that I can really explain with. Um, the, the, the real estate postcard ideas. Okay, so this is an excellent one. Um, say I have... Okay. So I do have a supporting post for this. This is why I am not ranking as well for that one. Um, so if I was doing a real estate postcard ideas and I wanted to get that to number one, I could do a separate post supporting content, funny realtor postcard ideas, and then have an internal link to my post on the main keyword that I'm trying to rank for. So um, hang on one second. I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that I've made. It's so funny. I always tell you guys you're going away and you would never know. Um, anyway, so what I've done is I've gone through my keyword research, and there's my broad keyword research ideas, but here we go. So this is my top 50 postcard posts. I wrote down what the ranking is, what the search volume is, and what the competition is, and then I have, they've given me ideas. I can actually just go in and either write a, po a supporting content post, or I can write a different section category for that. And what I've done is I've taken the biggest ones. So like I am, my better listing agent or buyer's agent post is ranking for buyer's agent. It's, it's not a really good buyer's agent post. It's a listing agent post. But so I wouldn't really, and this is a huge question I always have. So should I try to get the buy, better buyer's agent or better listing agent post to go up? Or should I write a separate post? since Google already knows that that's kind of what my site is about. And that is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using this post that's only tangentially about listing agents or buyer's agents to um, support a post just about buyer's agents. So that's kind of a question that seeing the data can sometimes help you. Is this a, oh, here we go. Um, so related words for home. So I'm saying these are blog post ideas I could do. Best real estate SEO keywords for listing agents. So I already have one that is best real estate SEO keywords. Now I could do one just for listing agents. And so as I did this on each of these tabs, I have all of my um, different maybe blog post ideas I'm going to do, things I'm going to write about. And the thing I love about Airtable is that I can put, um, like I can kind of separate them out here and it, it, just looks real, it just looks really nice, okay? I love that. Um, so hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Art Fleet.